What is now a smoking pile of rubble was where authorities found the body of 10-year-old Jet Set Gage last March. Also, the fire happened just two days after a judge handed down two consecutive life sentences to Jet Set's killer, Roger Bentley. This is the true crime story of 10-year-old Jet Set Gage, whose murder in March of 2005 was overshadowed by Jessica Lunsford's murder whose murder had occurred a month before Jet Setta's, and still to this day, her case is rarely discussed. Jet Setta was taken advantage of by two monster brothers, and one of the brothers would end up murdering her in the most brutal way. Come join me in the murder she shed, the place we honor the dead, right from my little she shed, and my name is Holly. I must first give a warning for this case. It does involve SA of a child and could be a trigger for some, so viewer discretion is advised. Jet Setta Marie Gage was born August 25, 1994 to Trina Gage and Chris Colvar in Des Moines, Iowa. She was a friendly child with a sunny personality despite suffering from mental and physical impairments. She suffered from spina bifida and a thyroid problem. She loved talking and was kind towards others. She was a bubbly, inquisitive girl who wore colorful, mismatched outfits and loved the outdoors. We all know little girls like that. I might have been one of those. Yeah, I believe I was. Jet Seta attended regular classes at Hoover Elementary School in Cedar Rapids until they realized she needed to attend a special school. Teachers said she had trouble paying attention and had behavioral issues. Jessetta was transferred from Hoover to a special school at St. Luke's Hospital in downtown Cedar Rapids for children with emotional and behavioral problems. Jessetta liked to do her own thing, often coming in from recess late because she was always involved in doing what she wanted to do, like picking dandelions. Jet as family would call her, was energetic and loved to ride her bike, roller skate, bowl, and run up and down the street with neighborhood children. Jet Seta lived with her mother, Trina, grandmother, and two siblings at her grandmother's two-story home in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Although I could not find much information about Jet Seta's dad, I don't believe him and Trina were ever married. Jet Setter was the oldest child and maintained a bedroom in the basement of that two-story home. Unfortunately, two evil monsters would enter Jet Setter's life when she was around seven years old. At some point in the mid-1990s, Trina and a man named James Bentley connected while talking on CB radios and started dating. Not long after that, James would introduce Trina to his brother, Roger Bentley. Jed Seta, who was born in 1994, was just a baby when they dated, and they only dated for about a year. They lost touch not long after that. Unfortunately for Jed Seta, they would reconnect in 2002. What the Gage family didn't know is the Bentley brothers had a disturbing past. Over the years, Roger and James Bentley both earned reputations for hopping from job to job, having difficulty paying their rent, alarming social workers, and bumping into trouble with the law. In James' late teens and early 20s, he had several bouts with the law for robbery. Roger, who was four years older than James and was a car mechanic, in February 1994, Roger was dating a divorced mother of a seven-year-old child when he started essaying the little girl. One winter night, while her dad was working the third shift at a factory, and her mom was supposed to be babysitting, Roger essayed the little seven-year-old on a waterbed in her father's bedroom. Roger served just over two years in prison for this crime. During his sentence, he refused any treatment for his essay conviction. After James and Trina broke up in August of 1997, James was accused of essaying a 12-year-old girl and of touching her six-year-old sister at a Cedar Rapid home. So, both of these guys were disgusting, disgusting, evil monsters, as you can see. So, you know this story is not going anywhere good fast. For James, the charges were later dismissed because the jury said there was not enough evidence. When the 12-year-old girl testified, she was intimidated by seeing James Bentley in the courtroom and answered, I don't know, just several of the questions. This little girl had to testify right out there while staring at him. I can't even imagine. 
I mean, I was abused by an individual when I was little, and I can't imagine having to stare at that person while I talked about what he'd done to me. That would be the hardest thing in the world for a little girl to do. I just can't even imagine it. And it's just sickening that they would make a little girl do that. But anyway, he got off because she couldn't do that. And they didn't have any evidence, really. Around 1998, James married his high school friend, Rochelle Joss. And she had two daughters from a previous marriage that lived with them. Rochelle was getting in trouble by social workers for James' brother, Roger, coming to her house because of his past charges against a child. See, James got dropped, so they didn't know about that one. But they were both At some point, social services removed them from the home. James was arrested in June 1999 for stealing and pawning a thousand in tools from Baines Construction in Fairfax. He pleaded guilty and was placed on three years probation. In 2002, James, while still married to Rochelle, reconnected with Trina, Jetsetta's mom. For some reason, it was decided that James could visit Jetsetta periodically, and also Jetsetta and her younger sister was allowed to go to James and Rochelle's home so he could babysit them while their mom was at work. James would often babysit them on weekends when his wife Rochelle was at work, too. Sometimes when James babysit the Gage girls, Rochelle would take her girls to another babysitter, which is really weird. Did James make her take them to someone else while he watched the Gage girls? The reasoning behind this was not stated. In 2003, Rochelle found Polaroid photos of eight-year-old Jed Seta and her younger sister, who was one at the time, in James' coat pocket. These were photos James had taken himself, and let's just say not ones that should be taken of little girls. Rochelle later confronted James regarding the photographs. He first denied knowing that the photographs existed. He later acknowledged that he had seen the photographs, but claimed that they were not his. He told Rochelle that he had found them under an air conditioner in their home in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. I just want to know if she believed that. If she did, she's very naive and perhaps not bright. I'm just saying. You find photographs of a child in your boyfriend, husband's pocket like that? Uh Uh-uh. I'm turning him in. I don't care. And I would never be back with him again. Then that's it. Squash that relationship. That's just disgusting. James said that he would send the photographs to Trina Gage so that she could take action on them. Guess what? He didn't. Finley then took them back from Rochelle, and there is no evidence that anyone has seen them since. Soon after this, Rochelle divorced James because of domestic abuse, but she never even told Trina about the photos she had found of her children and James. Sometime in 2004, Jet Seta, who had been violently acting out and at age nine had already attempted SUI side, was pulling her own hair out, biting herself, banging her head against walls, and attempted to choke her grandmother. She had finally confided to her grandmother and a social worker about the essay by James. A few months later, James was arrested for essay of Jet Seta over a two-year period. During a therapy session, Jet said to ask the therapist if she would help her construct cardboard dream catchers to hang in her room and home. Jet said stated these would stop James from getting to her and that it would help keep her safe. It is so sad, guys. It is so sad. During James' trial, the videotapes in which Jet said to described the essay to her therapist was not allowed to be used in court. We got him convicted. He got away with this before, I found out later on, and I'm just so glad that we got him on this. It's like, just said a, it's all for just said a. I'm so happy that he's convicted because now he has the name, a convicted pedophile. Before he, you know, he's tried twice and was acquitted because he always threatened the children. It didn't work with Jacetta. And, you know, she would have been in there to testify a long time ago for what he did. I'm so thankful. So thankful. Even after James was put in prison for S. Angel said that the family still allowed the older brother, Roger, to come over to their house, although they didn't know about his past conviction. I know if she had been my child, I would have not been in contact with that whole family. No, never. 
I don't even know what they were thinking. On the morning of March 24, 2005, Roger, who was a good auto mechanic, was making repairs to the Gage family van in order to help them out, he said. He worked outside the Gage family home on the van for most of the day, but came into the house from time to time to warm his body, especially as evening descended on the day. He stopped working on the van at 7.30 p.m. and entered the house for the last time. He went into the living room, sat down, and engaged in conversations with Jessetta, grandmother, and the three children. Jessetta's mother was at college. At 8 p.m., Jessetta's grandmother announced it was time for the three children to go to bed. Jessetta went downstairs to her bedroom in the basement by herself as directed by her grandmother. The grandmother took the two younger children to their upstairs bedroom and put them into bed. Roger accompanied Jetsetta's grandmother and the two children up the stairs and told the two children good night. Roger came downstairs alone as grandmother was still putting the kids to bed. Somehow, Roger was able to kidnap Jetsetta at this point. After getting the younger children tucked in for the night, she then went downstairs and locked the front door. A little bit later in the evening, she went down to the basement to check on Jetsetta, but to her dismay, Jetsetta was nowhere to be found. She called Jetsetta's mother and then the police. Immediately, an Amber Alert was issued. Between 10.45 and 11 p.m. that evening, a motorist pulled to the side of the road and stopped after he was flagged down by Roger. He was in a pickup truck with a topper over the bed of the truck. Roger asked the motorist for directions to Black Diamond Road. The motorist provided directions to Roger but later said he did not observe anyone in the cab of the truck. Although the topper had tinted windows, which did not allow the motorist to view the truck bed. The next morning, a couple were home just getting ready for work. They heard the Amber Alert on the morning news. And the alert announced that Santa was missing and that police were looking for Roger. Oddly enough, the couple knew Roger and were almost immediately overcome with suspicion that he may have taken Jet Setta to a trailer that the three had visited three days before. Roger occasionally did automobile repair work for them, and he had accompanied the couple to a trailer that the couple had been interested in buying. They promptly called police about their prophetic feeling. A short time later, law enforcement officers converged on the trailer. The search had come to an end. Roger emerged from the rear door of the trailer and was taken into custody. Officers observed that he was scruffy, unkept, and unshaven. He was wearing jeans with blood on the fabric in the area of the front zipper. Officers entered the trailer. They found it in a general state of disarray. In a bedroom, a youth-sized Chicago Bears jacket was observed along with a child's pink tennis shoe. Officers also observed a substance later determined to be blood on the mattress in the bedroom. Officers called out for Jet Setta with no response. A hurried search by the officers of the other rooms of the trailer failed to reveal her presence. The officers did observe a filing cabinet and a large piece of wood positioned in front of the vanity in the bathroom. A canine unit was summoned to the trailer to search for Jet Setta. After an unsuccessful search of the wooded area surrounding the trailer, the dog and his handler went into the trailer. Within a short period of time, the dog alerted to the area of the vanity under the sink in the bathroom. The officers removed the debris in front of the vanity and opened the vanity door located below the sink. The search had come to an end. Jet said his life had ended in a ratty, trashy trailer home. Can you imagine how scared she must have been when she was brought into this junky trailer? An officer reached in to touch Jet Setta and felt that she was cool to the touch. And he then seen there was blood on the little girl's private area, both front and back. State criminologists were summoned to the trailer. They removed Jet Setta's little body from the vanity. A plastic garment bag had been taped tightly around her neck. Her feet were also wrapped with plastic and bound with tape. The criminologists found blood on the bedding in the bedroom, as well as on the walls and door jam of the bedroom that was later identified to be Jet Setta's. An autopsy of Jet Setta's body revealed bruising to the deep tissues of her neck, blunt force trauma to the side of her head, 
and less severe bruising to the face, abdomen, shoulder, back, arms, and legs. Petechial hemorrhaging was present in her eyes, face, heart, and lungs. A frothy substance was found in her larynx. These findings supported a cause of death by asphyxiation from the plastic bag and compression to the neck and chest. The autopsy also discovered seminal fluid, both front and back, of her private area. So horrible. This poor little girl, how she must have suffered. And it's no surprise that this fluid tested to be, you guessed it, that monster Rogers. Criminologists additionally analyzed scrapings from Rogers' fingernails. The analysis found blood containing DNA from Jet Seta. Blood was also found on Roger's underwear, shirt, and fly area of his pants. This blood contained DNA from Jet Seta. The Chicago Bears jacket and shoes were confirmed to belong to Jet Seta. A copy of a book called the Necromantic Ritual Book was found at Roger's home. During trial, Jet Seta's younger brother testified to seeing Jet Seta leaving the residence with Roger. At the trial, jurors reacted with horror, sadness, and anger when they saw a photograph of Jet Seta Gage's body. But by the end of the first day of the jury selection process, most of the men and women said they could be impartial jurors after seeing the photographs of the 10-year-old, with a few saying they could not give Roger a fair trial after seeing the images. Roger Bentley was sentenced to two life terms for kidnapping, raping, and killing Jet Seta. James was sentenced to 100 years in prison during his trial. A few years after this, a resident burned down the trailer. Jet said I have been essayed in. At around 12.30 this morning, fire crews and the Johnson County Sheriff's Department were called to put out a blaze in an abandoned trailer. We are continuing to investigate. It is a fire investigation. Uh, We have to look at all the possibilities. Obviously, arson would be among those. What is now a smoking pile of rubble was where authorities found the body of 10-year-old Jet Seta Gage last March. Also, the fire happened just two days after a judge handed down two consecutive life sentences to Jet Seta's killer, Roger Bentley. And apparently, they put this man in jail for it. But honestly, I can't blame him. He said he got drunk and one night and just in, went out there and burned it. But I don't believe he deserved to go to jail for that. That thing needed to be destroyed. You know, you've seen it and the memories of that. I mean, they were probably horrible for Jet Seta's family. It needed to be gone. They should have already done it. The city should have already done it. Apparently, in 2013, Roger had photos of Jet Seta and other children in his cell at prison. They were confiscated from him and it is not made clear how he was able to get these photos. He even wrote the judge trying to get the photos back. He said they did not give a reason nor any court documentation for the removal of the photos. That is one of the worst things I've ever heard. And you're fighting to get those photos back? He said he was trying to get them back before the prison staff destroyed them. I don't think I've heard anything worse that he shouldn't have any rights at all. He should have no rights. I was so in shock. I was like, did I just read this? Is this truly News that I just read that this guy really, really believes he deserves these. Senator Chuck Grassley started a bill called Jet Seta Gage Prevention and Deterrence of Crime Against Children Act in 2005. The bill enhances criminal penalties for child SEX predators prosecuted in federal courts. Well, that's something at least, but I can't even believe these men were even let out to do this again. It just boggles the mind. This little girl's life could have been saved from these two evil monsters had they taken the right steps to just stick these men in prison. It's just ridiculous. All right, guys, I'm not going to leave y'all with a sad note because this was horribly sad. This whole case was horribly sad to me. I'd never heard of it. And I thought I'd bring it to you guys because some of y'all may not have heard of it either. I will just leave you with some bloopers so I don't leave you so depressed. I love y'all and I hope y'all have a blessed week. Be kind to others. Go out and love on others and just make a difference in someone's life this week. I love y'all. Bye. And love the outdoors. We all know little girls like that. I might have been one of those. Didn't even care if I was wearing anything, quite honestly, when I was little. I just run outdoors just like a chicken with its head cut off. Yeah, that's sidetracked. I'm getting sidetracked, yeah. Never mind all that. Uh, Oh, sorry. I'm drinking Dr. Pepper again, as usual. 
He was in a pickup truck with the trooper, with the topper, with the trooper. He went with the trooper. The, the whole thing would have been stopped if he'd been with the trooper. They heard the Lamber, they heard the Lamber alert. Roger occasionally did automobile, automobile peel. Come join me in the murder shed. She, 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 shed, she, she, shed, she, she, shed. One of those sheds. I don't know. Colorful, mismatched, mis- mismatched. God dang it. I never even wore shoes when I was a child. I just went out in the country barefooted and just ran through the woods like a feral child. I was a feral child. Yeah. I am a feral adult too. <laughs> I never wore shoes still. I killed him. I would have killed him. I'm sorry. I hate to say that right here, but you mess with my child like that. Yeah. I'd killed him. If Rochelle believes this, I got some land in Scotland I want to sell you. Kind of like that commercial. I don't know if you know what I'm talking about, but all these YouTubers getting in trouble for promoting this piece of land that you can buy in Scotland. Yeah, I don't know if anybody knows what I'm talking about. Like, did you truly think you were getting land over there? Little square inch, I don't even know what they gave away, but it was ridiculous. Oh, shit. I might as well just quit. Thank again. Oh, God. Feel me? Oh, God. Things are falling everywhere. There's that Simo. And Max tells you about, and don't be growling, that's nasty. I love both of y'all, so don't be growling like that. Tell them bye, say you love one.